What's up everyone, hope you guys are all having a great day today. I'm really not. I've realized that I need to quit YouTube. I mean, I have no right to make fun of people when I'm such a degenerate. I mean, I'm literally the bundle of sticks. What? You're making fun of other people again when you suck the D? How does sausage taste? So since I've decided to quit YouTube from those absolutely phenomenal roasts, I decided that I might as well go out with a bang and make fun of someone trying to say once again that the PC platform is bad. So enough talking and let's see what YouTube is shout out today. I like PC gaming, you know, like I've chosen PC gaming, but it is like a world of pain. It is just, if you are not a troubleshooter, if you do not know computer science, like don't be a PC gamer. <laughs> What the fuck? You have to know computer science to play on PC. Are you fucking slow? I'm a fucking bundle of sticks and I play on PC. I mean, yeah, you're probably gonna have to know some semblance of what the fuck your PC is doing in case something breaks, but you kind of have to do that with consoles too at this point. There is not one game that I've ever started in the history of games, especially AAA games, that hasn't given me horrible horrible problems what are you trying to play your games at 300 frames per second on the car cdr tv from 2007 because if not it should take at the very most two minutes to optimize your games to your pc if you have to at all which honestly a good 90 percent of the time i don't i mean unless you're fucking retarded of course which judging by this video i can kind of tell uh, like for, for for at least two hours before i can actually start playing two hours God, this video has to be fucking satire. There is no way it can take fucking two hours to optimize a game. This is my situation. I have my desk here. It's my, where I do my editing. I have two monitors, right? And then I don't want to game here though, like sitting at my desk. So I have my couch over there with the TV and I have my TV plugged in via HDMI. So when I'm gaming, I just want to like go over to the chick couch and then start playing. But Instead, what happens is I go over to the couch, start it, something goes wrong, I have to walk back over here, change something, go back to the couch, something's wrong, I come back, change something, go back to the couch, something's wrong, come back to the couch. It's like I have to go back and forth between the couch like five or six times. Or you could just sit at your desk and look at your TV while you optimize the game. Like, that's on you just not thinking if you have to go back and forth that much. Like, ideally, this is how it would work. Like, Microsoft, Microsoft, listen to me. This is how it would ideally work. Okay, I have my Xbox controller, right? I push the Xbox button and it gives me a list of my games. <laughs> Why does it do that? Because it doesn't fucking read your mind. Are you really expecting to start up your PC with as many things there are you can do on it and just for your computer to fucking read your mind and automatically jump to your game list? And even then, it's maybe four clicks from startup to getting into your game. I have no clue how this can be so fucking hard to click four times and maybe move your arm a little bit. It just, it, it does everything else. It doesn't give you a list of your games. So I want to press the Xbox button, gives me a list of my games, and then I click on the game I want to play, and then the next prompt that I want, <laughs> which monitor do you want to play on? I'll tap the monitor. Then the next prompt should be, which audio device do you want? <laughs> click on my TV, and then the game will start. And it's basically like that. You see the little thing in the bottom right corner of your screen that has like the audio sign. You click that, you click the drop down menu and you pick your audio device and you're good to go. And I'll be honest, his idea is a little more convenient than doing all the things I just explained, but still, the reason it's more clunky is because he can do a lot more on PC than you can on any console. And then I'm done. That is how it should work, I feel like. I mean, it doesn't seem too complicated, but instead what happens is, um, like I'll, I'll, I'll open up steam. I'll drag it to my third monitor, to my TV. I'll drag it over to the TV. I'll go over to the couch. I'll push play and then it'll play here. Or you could sit at your desktop and figure things out over there. So you don't have to walk back and forth. You absolute fucking retard. And I'll be like, fuck. Great. And then I learned that there's a shortcut, uh, windows shift left or right. That'll move it to the different display. But I was playing Resident Evil 2 and like literally doesn't do it. Yeah, I'll be honest, the way most of the Resident Evil games launch is kind of clunky, but that's more of a fault on Capcom's end than the PC platforms. It's just like Resident Evil 2 is like, meh, I don't like it. Then I have to turn the game off, run over here, push play over here, and then when the window comes up, I have to drag it onto the third screen, onto my TV, then run over to the couch and look at the, at the TV. And Again, stay at your desk until everything is set up. And then nine times out of 10, the resolution is wrong because it just randomly changes. Like I want to play at 1440p. 
I'm just I'm just playing at 1440p right now, okay? And I just want to play at 1440p, but like I go over there and it's at like 1366 by 285. You know, you're like, who plays it at this resolution? You know, like give me 480p, 720p, 1080p, 2160p, and 1440p. And then the rest of them can be in some advanced menu. But like Well, you keep complaining about convenience, but then wouldn't that be inconvenient for all the people who want to play on widescreen monitors? What like on Resident Evil 2, especially you're like clicking through them and every time you click through them, it like changes the resolution live and in like right in front of you. Again, that's more of a fault on Capcom's end. And honestly, Resident Evil is like one of the only games that I've seen do that. And if you have to, if you have far to go to get to your resolution, that's like pain in the ass. So I'm back on the couch and then I play the game, put, I, I start the game again. It's on the right screen, but now I have the wrong audio. The so figure this shit out before you go to your couch. Audio is playing over here back over here change the audio change the audio go back to the couch push play again and then i'm like okay i want to record this and i have to use nvidia shadow play i think that's what it's called still but nvidia is like overlay i have to use it and so i'll be on the couch and i'll start the overlay and then it'll be again on this monitor like the game is playing on that tv and it's and it opens up over here makes no sense it's because it doesn't read your fucking mind so then I'll stop doing that. Also, it like freezes the game sometimes. It's like, I don't get it. So I'll stop the game again, and then I have to come back over here, and then I have to go to display settings, and I have to check off, like make that monitor to my main display, the TV. And then I can go back over there, and then when I do NVIDIA, like then it works. Um, NVIDIA is like, I, I don't mind it. I, I, I want to record an HDR, and OBS Streamlabs doesn't do it, and Windows Game Bar doesn't do it. Does he not know that like almost nothing supports YouTube and HDR? Hopefully Windows 11 fixes all this stuff. Hopefully this is preemptive. Then I came back over here to watch the footage and I opened it up and this is what I saw. Yes, my desktop. It recorded my desktop. And that's because you weren't paying attention to what you set Nvidia Shield to record. This is not your PC's fault. It is entirely your own stupidity. For an hour. Why? Why would it do that? Yeah, we're gonna record the, the secondary display that's not in use. And I've chosen this. My PC now at this point is like, there's so much money in this PC now, with that, especially with that graphics card. So, and, and it looks good. Like it's giving me good frame rates and everything. It like looks really great. And I'm, I'm happy about that. But even like Red Dead Redemption 2, another AAA game, it's just, I'm constantly in and out of it. And it takes so long to load. And then it has, it makes me install like the Rockstar launcher. You keep blaming your PC for shit the developers are doing. You complain about the launcher, a fair complaint, but it's not the PC's fault. You complain about RE2's optimization system. It's the only optimization system I've seen that does that. But you're blaming your PC on it. God damn, this video makes me want to slam my head into my desk again. Which does literally nothing. It just, it just launches before the game. It's like, I open up Steam, I push play, Rockstar Games Launcher opens then the game opens and that's it. Like if Rockstar Games Launcher like gave me the option of changing game settings like outside the game, that'd be one thing. Like I would love to change settings outside the game, but hardly any games give me that option. Like only Shadow of the Tomb Raider gave me that option. And that is laziness on the developer's end. So it's just, it's just such a pain in the ass to get games to work. You have to have a computer science degree. In order to get HDR working, I had to open up the settings.ini file, find the HDR value and change it from true to false when it opened. These are- What the fuck were you doing? Were you trying to emulate shit? AAA games. It doesn't compute. Maybe I need to work for these people. Rockstar, Microsoft, Capcom, like, please let me, let me help you because this sucks, it does. Like just freaking like, let me designate my TV as my gaming display. Microsoft, Microsoft, let me designate my TV as my gaming display. Except it's not that simple because Steam would have to do that for every single game, which it really isn't able to send in a fucking AI to change the settings for your game. Again, it would be nice, but it takes like two minutes to optimize even games with the worst style of optimization, like the modern Resident Evil games. I never use it unless I'm gaming. So make it so that when I push the Xbox button, Gaming display turns on, just like it's an Xbox. It's like, a, it's just like an Xbox TV, you know? Boom, list of games. Because your PC does not read your fucking mind. Why can't I have that? Even just letting me choose my monitor before the game starts would be a huge, huge improvement. Like I've, 
the the lengths I've gone to, like I literally bought extension cables, like like this long extension cables for my display ports so I can unplug them easily under the monitor because I have to unplug them all the time, especially with HDR. I, just constantly plugging things and unplugging things. And I just want it to be easy. I just want it to be like an Xbox. I just want it to be like a PlayStation. Um, please, Microsoft. So you obviously want a console experience, right? So buy a fucking console, retard. Let me do this. Or if you're someone watching and you have some amazing, wonderful workaround that I have never heard of, like, please tell me. I just, I just want to know. I just want to be able to push the Xbox button, select a game, select my monitor, select my audio device, then go. And then in that situation, then it wouldn't even be so bad. It is called a console if I have to be changing settings a lot, you know? Like if in game mode, when I push the thing, if it disabled these two monitors, that would be even better because that's always that's such a problem having these two monitors because then NVIDIA wouldn't think it might be a different monitor. It would only be the, the only monitor like available, you know? So if you are a PC gamer and you are running into problems like this, let me know. If you are a PC gamer and you have your TV connected to your PC via HDMI or whatever, let me know your experience because it are you like running back and forth to your couch constantly it's just i mean honestly all that troubleshooting when you could have just done a really simple thing unplug the display ports in the back of your computer and then start playing on your tv you don't have to worry about any of the other shit and everything automatically gets sent to your tv really you would have thought it takes a fucking degree in computer science to figure this shit out but no some retarded asian sophomore in high school figured it out imagine that it's so i hate it i hate it I hate it. I love, but I love like maxing out my settings and like tinkering and all that kind of stuff. I love the tinkering, but it's the running back and forth with these things that just shouldn't be. They just, they just shouldn't be like this. What are you going to do? Um, so yeah, please let me know in the comments how you feel about all this kind of stuff. PC gaming, ugh, so disappointing. Um, but I'm, I was gonna say I'm optimistic, but that's not true. Um, I guess Windows 11 is coming out soon, so maybe that'll fix some issues. But if, if you're listening, Microsoft, please just game button with my li a list of games that I can just choose from. Okay? Thank you. Thanks for watching my video till the end. And I hate outros, so you know what to do. Hey, Siri. Why don't you answer me? What the fuck was that song at the end? God damn it, poor Black Widow. The amount of times I've had her head slam into that desk in just these last few weeks is enough to make her think that the Black Widow movie was good. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I'm fucking done with this shit. The roasts from earlier were bad enough, but this shit has just made my mental health even worse. I'm off to blow two holes in my head this time, and hopefully I won't have to come back in the next video. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you really liked it, hit subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day. I, 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 I...